Hi, I'm coming to you live with my coronavirus haircut to show you how I just installed iOS 14 on my primary device in a home that has hundreds and hundreds of HomeKit accessories. I know, I know, I'm risking losing all that, but I'm just too impatient and I just love testing out all of the latest features and I don't have another device to test it on. Can't install Mac OS because I need it for work, can't even do it, but my phone, you know what, I risked it and all my work accessories are working just fine. My work apps are working perfect. So the home kit, that's my, um, that's what I love doing. I'm planning on posting a video to show you my entire home and all the hundreds of devices where they are, what I do with my scenes and automations to make it a fun home for me and uh, my wife and our five kids. Um, we have a lot of rooms, a lot of accessories and Honestly, HomeKit makes it so much easier for a family living in a home to automate all the different things that they have going on. So I'll be showing you that another time. But for now, iOS 14 beta 1, it was installed successfully. It uh, works. All the devices are working the same as before. And uh, so I don't think you need to worry too much about forking your HomeKit setup uh, right now. Who knows what might happen? Um, you know, geez, I've had to rebuild my HomeKit uh, database from scratch probably like four or five times over the years and it's a horrible horrible experience but you get through it and I'm hoping I never have to do it again but right now everything's working great so let me go ahead and transfer over to screen recording and show you some of the different things that uh, are new in iOS 14 for HomeKit okay here we are in iOS 14 beta 1 and I'm about to launch the home app First, you'll notice that instead of having to click through on the name of the home or just below it to see a written description of what the status of the home is, you can actually scroll through and see the status. And it's actually really interesting how they've done this. This is, um, this is really nice. Uh, three accessories have no response, and it'll show you exactly which ones they are. Um, of course, the LG OLED C9, as soon as the TV turns on, it always um, shows unresponsive. But I've got a couple there. Um, I have hundreds and hundreds of devices. So frankly, for me, I'm having only three showing no response is amazing. Um, I had a lot of improvement after I added uh, the Eero Pro mesh system, and I have four of them all wired through Ethernet backhaul. And um, oddly enough, it's saying they're not connected. This happens from time to time. And when you restart the, the Eero system, um, they come back. But uh, we know they're connected because I'm actually using that Wi-Fi right now. The climate tab is really interesting. So um, you'll notice I've got some Dyson heaters. I've actually got about like 10 of them. And um, I and connected them to HomeKit through HomeBridge. And uh, so it will show you actually all of the different rooms and all the different climate devices you have all throughout your home. Uh, you'll notice here that it shows the air quality, the temperature, the humidity, and uh, allows you to control all of them, which is, um, which is really pretty amazing. Uh, to see them all together in, in one spot. Um, some of these are outdoor sensors, like 105 degrees. But um, you'll see these, um, it really does capture every single climate device that I've got in the room, and there's a lot of them. And, um, next, uh, the security systems. I noticed that uh, you have to name your security system with the word security system in it. Um, my Lyric wasn't named that way and it didn't show in this tab, but uh, all of the security devices you have will be shown there, which is pretty handy. Um, and then it goes to what it would have normally shown you in the other view, which doors are locked or unlocked, which lights are on. Well, actually, I guess by hitting that, I actually just turned on and off all of those six lights, um, which I don't think is probably the way they want that to happen. Um, you have to long press on it in order to go in. Otherwise, I'm pretty sure it's just turning them all off. That's actually kind of kind of a weird way to handle that. Um, long press on them then, and you'll see which uh, blinds are open, which fans are on. It'll also tell you um, which rooms have motion in them, which is kind of nice. Uh, before, with the tile view, as you'll see, they, um, they trigger on and off, and it would honestly make it so that you can never really look at the same configuration for more than a second without it changing. But uh, here it's actually more manageable. I like that a lot. Um, 
the scenes are, you know, really the exact same as they always were. Um, I'm just going to scroll through my favorite accessories here just so you can see kind of the breadth of accessories I've got and the fact that they're all connecting. There was no problem at all. I just installed the iOS beta profile and installed um, iOS 14 that way, and it actually worked just fine. Um, one interesting thing, when you long press on a device and go into this view, um, the Automations tab is really convenient because it now shows you every automation in which your device is associated. Um, I don't believe there was any way to really see that in one clear view before, and um, now you can actually disarm when the first person arrives or when the last person leaves if you want to. I've never really set that up because um, I don't really trust the location proximity detection. But um, as you'll see here, um, most of the views are um, pretty much the same. The automation is convenient. But the devices um, are all connecting. I haven't encountered any problems there. And uh, I was honestly a little worried with hundreds and hundreds of devices. Now, the cameras, um, instead of scrolling left to right, they're scrolling up to down. Um, I don't know why my front gate doorbell just turned off. But uh, the, um, the cameras are all working great. Uh, most of these are HomeKit secure video cameras. And so when you go into these settings, the recording options are actually the same as they were before. Um, hmm, I'm not really seeing here where you would... Oh, there we go. These, these are a little bit different, but I'm not seeing where I can do the activity zones. Um, maybe that, uh, maybe that's something I will discover here in a moment. You'll see that the cameras are connecting pretty well. I don't think they ever connected any faster than this, to be honest. But the big talk icon that they just showed is, is nice. Hmm. So, as you can see, um, one of the interesting things is the new um, view when you hit the home button. Way more convenient. You just hit that and you can see all of the rooms that you've got. And then you go down to home settings where you would access what you would when you otherwise hit that home button before. Um, and uh, otherwise, um, other than just kind of sorting through uh, your device is just a little easier with this. There aren't any, um, any huge changes, but as a HomeKit aficionado uh, like myself and I think many others, I uh, was wondering whether iOS 14 would kind of improve the experience at all. And I'm pretty impressed with uh, how, well it, how well it's working. I like the new status indicators right here. And overall, I think if you upgrade to iOS 14, you shouldn't uh, screw up your HomeKit configuration I also just wanted to demonstrate for you the difference in the uh, control center with HomeKit. You can see here they've uh, tried to put a few of the most recently used items um, down there as their own tabs, but if you hit on favorites, you can actually get to a list of all of your favorites, including scenes and accessories. I think that's pretty convenient too. Final note, just to give people some peace of mind, if you're using HomeBridge or Hoobs, HomeBridge out of the box, um, it's working just fine with all the HomeBridge devices I have, which includes the Starling Hub, uh, which connects all of your Nest devices to your HomeKit. And honestly, that is a seamless way to take advantage of a doorbell system. Uh, 
there isn't another one, honestly, for HomeKit right now that's even close to as good as just getting a Nest Hello and uh, a Starling Hub and connecting the devices. It's been working flawlessly. Honestly, uh, connects better than most of my other cameras. And um, the other good thing about it is that um, on tvOS, you'll actually get doorbell notifications using the Starling Hub right on tvOS, which I'll be testing out later on. But uh, my Harmony Hub is actually working just fine. And um, so it are my um, Dysons. So feel free, if you're a Homebridge fan, to go ahead. That's all I've got for today. Hope you guys like the video, and um, please stay posted. I'm, I'm excited to show you guys all the different devices that I've got. Um, feel free to post in the comments, and I'll try to answer any questions you've got.